Hi, and welcome to Bacon and Eggs. I'm still Ethan Edge Hill. And I am still Tyler Carlin. This is our weekly podcast where we talk about some of our favorite movies. And literally everything else on our minds. We get kind of off track sometimes. All the time. Thanks for tuning in this week for a brand new episode. Or you're listening 30 seconds after the last one finished. Either way, we don't judge. I hope you liked that uh, job interview thing we did. This is your first time joining us. We've got a bunch of episodes in the back catalog and go check out. I recommend the first six episodes. They kind of give you a little background about who we are. And what we do. And what this podcast is. Uh, it'll also give you a great background. Actually, it's going to have nothing to do with what you're about to hear. This movie is like totally off the cuff. I mean, it's not off the cuff in MCU, but... Yeah, you don't really need a background on this movie. No, super watchable. Uh, but anyway, buckle up. We're going to dive right in. We make absolutely no promises as to how long this intro will stick around. We're so glad you joined us. Anyway, Ethan. Without further ado, Tyler, what did you think of Jeff Goldblum's The Fly? Oh, you Jeff Goldblum's The Fly. I thought you were going to say, honey, I shrunk the kids. Oh, that's a way better one. I it. know. I, I had like money on it. I literally did. Damn it. I, I've got a, what are they? Oh, I guess it's zeros now. Before it was zeros. I can't mean, I can, Germany? I can say it again. Cause it'd be no, 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 no. Joke. Okay. This is all gold. Okay. Okay. Uh, this movie, uh, I, I didn't watch the fly or honey. I shrunk the kids. Although I did watch honey. I shrunk the kids more recently than I'd like to admit. We watched Ant-Man with Paul Rudd, the guy from I love you, man, as a superhero. Yeah. Can you believe? Okay. I'm going to talk about this in a second. Uh, Ant-Man released Jul- June 29th, 2015. Jaloon. Eight- <laughs> June 29th, 2015. That's 890 days ago. Uh, it's a budget of only $142 million, and I think it shows it's the second it's... smallest budget. Um, I... What is the smallest budget, Ethan? Uh, Iron Man 1. Oh. $140 million. Uh, Oh, wow. It's right there. Yeah. I made $519 million. So that's better than Hulk, Thor, or Captain America 1, which I think I can believe. But it's worse than all the other ones. Uh, I think these scores are wrong. Am I wrong? No. 82% critic on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep, yep. 86%. Nope, percent... I had to double check it. You did? Because I thought it was a 75. Nope, it's 82. 82% critic on Rotten Tomatoes, which I can pretty well agree with. 86% audience, which I actually agree with more because of the audience perspective, not because of the critic perspective. And a 64 out of 100 on Metacritic, which I think I also expected. I think I could have called That's actually all of only these. two points lower than uh, The Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah, but we liked Avengers Age of Ultron a lot more than the I'm, community I mean, did. just on Metacritic. I don't really care what Metacritic says. They, they It's irrelevant. I don't know why we keep right. putting this store score because it doesn't really because mean anything. It doesn't mean anything in this context. But once we get to other like properly critical, yeah, movies, so we can like rank it against think, other things, <laughs> right? I think it's gonna make a little bit more sense. But these movies are at the end of the day. Yeah, okay, I just double checked. Eighty-two uh, percent critic. Yeah, uh, that is correct. I just double checked that. So Ethan, what I want to tell you about this movie is uh, you've got this little skeleton that we usually go through. You yeah. know blocks i'm gonna throw it out okay i'm gonna throw it out entirely we're gonna go through okay. the movie like Let's... we always do but uh we're just gonna we're just gonna uh off the cuff okay. not winging just it cuff it okay not winging it because i have thought about this a lot it's cuffing season. i have notes I mean, uh, I do as well. But uh, so, yeah. just real quick, let's let's. So this is a first. It's an, an initial movie in in a new series within the MCU, within the uh, you know the the whole big universe. Uh huh. So it's it's you know your your Thor one, your Captain America the First Avenger, your Iron Man, your the Incredible Mess. You know those kind of <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so just real quick before we dive into it, give me kind of a, a you know, a, a first impression. Give me a, a one out of 10 just immediately. As and a movie? We'll, yeah, as, as just as a movie. As, as how you, how'd you like it? How'd you feel about it? Just give me give me something real quick. 8.3. 8. Wow. Okay. Yikes. I'm going to stick it at like a solid six and a half. I need a 6.5 if you're going to say solid. Okay. 6.5. Okay. Um, here's the thing. This movie is incredibly watchable. Yeah, for sure. It is maybe the most watchable in the whole series Mm, nope i would disagree with that except maybe guardians of the galaxy volume one or iron man or iron man iron man captain america the first avenger nope nope more watchable than captain america the first avenger you gotta kind of be invested in the superhero thing for that one no you don't i don't know man i of all the movies my fiance can watch like sit through and watch two of them two Okay. I'm holding up two fingers. Okay. I can't see that. I'm staring at a computer screen that isn't your I'm hand. Scaring, I'm staring at your little face in the Skype window. You don't have a picture in Skype as for it's the like the 17th silhouette. consecutive week, <laughs> which makes me very sad. Uh, do I have to put one in? I mean, I put that one in. Oh, okay. Um, My fiance, Emily, can watch two of them. Guardians of the Galaxy, which is our sick day movie, and Ant. Okay. She cannot watch Iron Man because you got to be invested in the superhero thing. It's, mm, it's too high stakes. You don't. It's, the stakes are too high. This is bite-sized, Ethan. Okay. You like what I did that's there? Fun. You like that's what fine. I did there? I, I get it. I get it. I get what you're saying. Okay, so I, I, I hear you. I hear you. 
It is incredibly watchable. It is it is an enjoyable movie. It is not a good movie. Oh, I disagree. I think it's very good. I don't. It's I th- just it's missing a lot of things that it really needed. Well, let's let me do some point to point comparisons okay. for you to give you an idea why I like this movie better than others. Okay. Um, if you have to compare Kate from Lost in this movie, I don't remember her name. Hope. Hope. She. Michael Michael Douglas says it about four thousand times. He does. You're absolutely right. Hope, but it was it escaped me for two seconds. Hope compared to almost any of the other female counterparts in any of these movies. Who do you pick? I mean, you, you, but she's not another female counterpart, though. She is. She's the Wasp. She's a Avenger. Right. That's what I'm saying. She's not. She's on the level of Black Widow, not Pepper Potts. Okay. But I think of her as in this movie. I think of her as Maria Hill. Yeah. I just. I can't, too, I, she's too much of a character, though. You got it. You got it. She's a main character in it. She is a main She's character. She's almost I like, more of a character than than Paul. Rudd. Paul Rudd is a, almost a minor character in this movie. I really, yeah. So I really like her character. I think she oh, deserves absolutely. Absolutely. more credit than she ever gets. Uh, I think Michael Douglas as Hank Pym, I love. I absolutely mm-hmm. love. For sure, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you so far. I love the supporting cast with Luis and with the other guys and the silly accent. Well, the and, other guy, you mean Ti the rapper? Well, not Ti, the other guy, the not Ti. You, you don't like Ti? No, I like T.I. I thought he was good in the yeah. movie. He had like five lines in the yeah, whole movie. It was, it was hilarious. It was great. Um, I like the storyline between – I like Paul Rudd. I think he's excellent. I think he's supposed to look like a white-collar ah, criminal in a blue-collar criminal world. This is where we disagree. You don't like Paul Rudd? No, I love Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd in, in Civil War. I do not like I him Paul in this Rudd movie. In this. I do not like him in this movie. Oh, I totally disagree. So his I, dramatic acting is bad. It's just bad. Like it's he's, the movie's not dramatic. Yeah, but it's trying so hard to be. I want to ask you a question, Ethan. Okay. Before we keep on Paul Rudd too much, I want to know your thoughts on Darren Cross, the the yellow jacket oh, as he's a villain. A hundred percent trash. Are you joking? Trash. Let's take the Ethan villain scale here for a second. Is there clear, laid out motivation no, he's from just the start? Nuts. No, there's clear, laid out motivation from the start. Look, money is not a good enough motivation for a super. It's villain. not money. It's not money. It's the 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 pim particle messes with your brain when you do it too much. Right. He's insane. Cool. No, he's not insane. He is. He is trying to prove himself to Hank Pym, and he doesn't do it for the money because he sells it to the U.S. government for twenty percent the original cost. What? No, he doesn't. Yes, he, they lean in. They say, we'll give you 20% for it. 20%. I think he said 20% off. No, 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 no. I think he said, because I noticed that and I was like, what a weird way to sell a product. You could be right. You could be right. But 20% off is still insane. I mean, sure. Uh, but... Yeah, that's like a crazy good sale on massive weapons manufacturing. For sure. And he's got he's got a clear motivation in that he like he loves the daughter. He thinks that he can never prove himself to Hank Pym because Hank Pym was trying to protect him. There's like this cool history and chemistry between them. I think he's got clear motivation, uh, a good strategy. It's like a heist scene, which I think is super cool. And he's like a step ahead of the heist. I cannot believe you don't like this. I, I don't know. He just gave me a weird vibe, man. It was he was too he was too much like a '90s Batman villain for me. Oh, but that's the thing. This is this is what this movie does better than. I won't say better than any of the other Marvel movies because I think it does it just as well. But because it doesn't have the peripherals, you notice it a little bit more. What do you mean the peripherals? So I think this is like if you took like an elementary jazz class, you learn you learn how to you learn all the rules you're supposed to follow to improvise to make successful jazz music, correct? Right. So what all the other Marvel movies do is they do that, but then they also are so advanced they can break the rules and make statements where they need to. I think this movie plays it safe, but it gets the fundamentals exactly see, right. I yeah, this see for this for me this movie just doesn't fit in the MCU. Like it is and th- and I, I think I, I understand why is because this movie uh, Edgar Wright who originally wrote and was going to direct the movie has been working or had been working on it since like 2001. Yeah, it's an old movie, old screenplay. So that's what I'm saying is like they took his he had this whole script which everybody is described as being amazing and like they wish they used the original script and they changed it all around to try to make it more comedic and Peyton Reed stepped in like last minute, like a couple days before filming and, and just kind of did something with it. And and it's not bad by any means, but it definitely fits more in that like old, for me, it fits in that old Marvel era. Like the, the original Spider-Man movies, oh. Daredevil, Punisher, the Fantastic Four, uh, Elektra. It feels, those it even feels movies. a little bit like, like a transition from those to phase one. I don't think it feels like Daredevil or Elektra, or maybe Daredevil, but not Elektra by any means, or Punisher. Uh, but I, I see what you're coming from with like 
uh, the detached. But, but you get what I'm saying, though. But it's like that. Yeah, I, no, I, I hear get what this, you're saying. Yeah, but it's that. It's kind of like once once the MCU started, once Iron Man happened, it was a whole different era we ushered in for Marvel movies. And I, you actually texted me before, and you said it's the best DC movie Marvel's right ever because made. it just reminded me so much of like a like a like a like a Tim Burton Batman. Yeah, type yeah well, it's movie. like it's its own world. And I I jive with what you're saying there. I really do. And, and that's that's my problem with um ah what the hell is his name. Um, Darren Cross. That's that's my problem with Darren Cross is he just feels too much to me like a like like a like a Batman villain, like a mid tier Batman villain, like Penguin. Yeah, no, nah, more like the Riddler. Like Jim Carrey's the Riddler, who I liked, and I liked Carrie Stoll, Corey, 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 Corey Stoll as um Darren Cross. It's just it was it was weird writing. The scripting of it is really strange. I thought I thought it was really cool. I did think it was a little campy, like the little gun he uses to zap the the senator. It looks like it's straight out of the, like, a Spy Kids movie. Right. You know what I'm talking about? And he's just got, um, he's, he's specifically got a bunch of lines, especially when he is Yellow Jacket, that are just, you're trying way too hard to sound menacing. Yeah, but that's, that's the whole thing, is that it's this, like, within this greater Marvel universe, there's this great bite-sized, you know, small-scale movie, and it's, it's playing up its own theme in that he is small. Like, For that's sure. the thing. For sure. He is the little guy. He For is sure. literally the little and guy. And it is something I definitely like about it. It is very self-contained. It is a complete story. You can leave it with the series. You can take it out of the series. It is tied in very well by the post credit scenes, but you don't need them. Well, but I actually, I like the, what they did with, uh, it was Sam Wilson, right? The Falcon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to bring him in. Um, I like, yeah, I thought that was a good idea. Which, he uh, wasn't even really supposed to be in it originally well they weren't gonna be able to pay for like iron man no they weren't supposed to have any of the avengers in it he just like wanted to do it well i mean can you blame him he's pretty cool no for sure but like they were just but, gonna and and what i like ready about to go ahead is, with a movie without any avengers in it what i like about this is even if you dive into the mcu thing is like at the end of age of ultron they're like yeah it's this random warehouse in upstate new york we picked out and uh these are the new avengers right so you got cap as the leader with falcon and scarlet witch and uh iron patriot and i think that's everybody right yeah and then and 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 tasha and natasha and vision and then and vision and then you've got this movie where you go to upstate new york into this old warehouse where stark was and you fly in and instead of iron man showing up because he's in every freaking movie yeah you know you get you get one of the new avengers and at first you're like oh wow budget but then well, it's no, like, it wasn't budget. It was Iron Man's gone. Right. That's the idea is right now that like Iron Man is yeah. not going to do is this not, anymore. He's not doing any more of these at this point. Uh, right. And they brought Hydra back, which I thought was real weird and yeah. unnecessary. Like, I think I think what they did was they just they put that in. They sprinkled it in there so they could open a door and be like, well, if, if after this Thanos thing, we need another villain. Well, And this was it was supposed to come out before uh, Age of Ultron. Really? Yeah. But it happens after Age of Ultron because that's why Sam Wilson and the and the whole them was there right again they wrote it without sam wilson in it right okay yeah i guess you're right it was supposed to happen after age of ultron uh or before age of ultron because i they just i i guess when edgar wright quit it kind of threw a wrench in the gears when your director quits Uh, like right before you're about to film yeah because he's just like i don't want to do marvel anymore you guys don't like my script well i'm gonna go make baby driver instead which good good on you buddy great baby driver fun fact sitting literally right next to me great movie which if you want a movie that's got a cast uh uh, as a heist movie with uh uh, somebody who's played a a villain and a rapper in it uh, baby driver not a bad choice yeah no good good movie Good movie. Anyway, so let's 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 dive into this. Um, and I want wait. Hold on. There's 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 one I think unfortunate, unavoidable major flaw in this movie. Now I've never read the comics. Okay. But Ethan, what is the worst part about this movie? I have no idea. What I don't. The know. ants. The ants are the worst part about this movie. What a gimmick. Why is that a gimmick? Oh, oh, because because Civil War shows us that Ant Man doesn't need ants to be Ant Man. That's the whole point. Is that the suit gives you like full range of motion and ability to go anywhere and do anything what do you need an army of ants for uh, if ants were that powerful why do you need the suit because i get it because they need a leader hank pym says it i hear you yeah i mean I, I got the ants i didn't like them i wasn't happy about it giant bugs don't really play well with me but uh, uh they were uh, they were super creepy but oh i didn't think they were creepy they looked very clearly like put in and put i mean they are but i don't like giant bugs <laughs> man i don't like i think that's pretty reasonable like if a giant i would not have a giant ant uh just you know like living under my table and eating dinner with me no me neither i do have a dog in my office right now yeah there's a big difference between dogs and giant ants and if you can't tell that difference i'm not entirely sure you deserve to have dogs i could tell the difference sawyer here only has four legs yeah instead of six Six. (laughs) not spider ant ant yeah, I thought the ants was like, uh, what do you, what do you need them? For? I don't know. In my brain just now, I was like, spiders have twelve legs, so ants have eight. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> Spiders it's do not late. need it's four more legs. It's late when we do this. It's late when we do this. It is late, and I, I do have a gigantic energy drink, um, so that'll probably help. But I am I am very tired. I apologize if I don't make sense sometimes. It's okay. I'm also I'm not mad cheating on Rockstar this week. What with? Nos. Oh, that's okay. So, like Nos. Rockstar doesn't make those giant, like, 24-ounce turbo cans, and it was a giant 24-ounce turbo can kind of night, and so I bought a Nos. Nice. I went with a Rockstar Zero Carb. Nice. Uh, zero sugar, zero carbs. Uh, uh, this is the Destiny 2 edition. Sometimes I forget that carbohydrates are just sugar, and I think that they're like an ingredient in bread because everybody always talks about bread. And I'm like, I don't want any bread in any of my Rockstar. Uh, please take the bread out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, is carbs a problem in this drink? But I guess it is. Yeah, it's got sugar. I, I, you are like blowing my health knowledge mind right now, which is crazy because well, I pride if, myself. If you on look on the back amount. of anything, it says total carbohydrates blank and then sugars, which is a subset of total carbohydrates. Huh. Yep. Look at that. But I can never remember that. I just associate them with wheat and wheat byproducts. Mm, snakes, huh? Yeah. And uh, Rockstar is definitely not a wheat byproduct. Correct. It might have some whey in it. I'm not positive. Malta dextrose. Anyway, so you like this movie? Oh, I do like this movie. I, I, and that was my next point. Is by, I by no means am trying to disparage this movie. I really enjoyed watching this movie. It's just kind of weird for me. It doesn't It doesn't feel like, a, like an MCU movie. It doesn't feel like part of the series. It definitely felt like we stepped away. And I definitely have some issues with a little bit of the acting and a little bit of the script for some of the actors but i also have very there were very shiny moments in the script and you see in the next movie with uh with ant-man in it that he really just gets to shine so i think that once they stop making him try to be all dramatic and and this like i almost said superhero but that's not what i'm trying to say like like mr good guy hero like i have to say the right thing at all times then and he gets a lot better yeah, I mean, I definitely think there was, like, something, like, Luis plays with a little bit where they address the whole, like, we're bad guys doing a good guy thing. Right, right, and that was fine, because they were like, they were like, he goes, uh, you know, are, are we the good guys? And Scott's like, yeah, we're the good guys. And he's like, feels weird, doesn't it? And, like, that was funny. Um, but there were some scenes where, where Scott was just trying really hard to be, like, it's okay, Hope. Your, your dad loves you because he wants to protect you and he's not a bad guy. Yeah, well, I think they had a hard time reconciling why Scott Lang. Like, of all the people you could have picked, you picked this, like, cat burglar. Yeah, no, why Scott Lang is definitely a big problem with this. Where they, yeah, they just, like, could not answer and I don't, that question. And I don't know why they picked Scott Lang. And I think, like, it was, it, Scott Lang was an interesting choice. Um, why they didn't, well, he says he's good. No, but I mean, why they didn't just go with, like, Hank Pym Ant-Man. Like, why we got a, a mid-plot origin story, as opposed to, like, an original origin story. Um... I guess partially because they'd already built Ultron without Hank's help. Yes. So he's supposed to... And he's, like, I guess Tony's age and builds Ultron with Tony. But in this one, they portray him to be Howard's age. Correct. Or... No, older than Howard. Or younger than Howard. Younger like than Howard. Between younger there. than Howard, but Howard's contemporary. Obadiah's age, yeah. Yeah. Like, Howard was definitely older than him, but, um... This this could have gone a weird direction where Hank Pym ended up as the villain, and I'm glad they didn't go that way. You were gonna get into, uh, I guess, the plot or whatever? Something like that. I don't yeah, know I mean, just dive into it, because I don't, I don't want to just sit here and keep, like, vaguely <laughs> on it. Y on it i kind of feel like i am i mean i'm being more of a downer about it than you are and i'm not uh, not trying to be a downer about it. like i really enjoy this movie but it's like i'm the one who's brought up brought up kind of negative things so far but if we're gonna well, talk about how the answer's stupid yeah but if we're gonna get into stuff we might as well get into stuff you know yeah, let's do it um okay so we get the we get the first scene where uh we get a view in 1989 1989 1989 1989 one year after peter quill left earth uh and we get a shot of the triple skeleton or whatever it's called being built the, the, what? the shield hq the triskelion oh oh yeah, yeah i couldn't yeah. remember what it's called so i said triple i skeleton. thought you were talking about like the ultron armor or something no no no, like, no, no, oh, no. The man build, the i building missed that in the middle of the lake <laughs> with the, 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 the dullness right and the, the thing they blow up and in, the wooden in, pop uh, and yeah in, in uh, uh, winter soldier pop. yeah um it's being built and uh hank's mad at Howard and some other Michael people. Michael Douglas looks good yeah. as a young man. Yeah, my, well, that's what Michael Douglas used to look like. I know, it was a good effect. Yeah, they did a really good job with it. Apparently, it like really messed him up watching this. Really? Yeah, because he was like, he saw it, at for, he saw himself for the first time, was just like, God, I used to like actually look like that. It was like watching an old movie of myself, but it was a movie I just shot. Right. What do you think of the fact that uh, Tony Stark, or not Tony Stark, Howard Stark was played by uh, What's-His-Butt, who doesn't look at all like what Howard Stark looked like when he was younger? Well, John Slattery was the original Howard Stark. In, in Iron, Iron Man, Man 2? Correct. And then they got the weird, like, Hispanic-looking guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. Didn't look anything like him. Yeah, no idea. I mean, I, I, I like I did not real John Slattery. I've, I've seen this job. movie a gajillion times. I did not realize that was Peggy Carter standing right there until this time. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, look at that. Yeah, that's definitely an thing. impressive thing to make, like, 70-year-old Michael Douglas and, like, 25-year-old Haley Atwell look the same age. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. That was it's a always cool, cool thing. That, the whole Benjamin Button thing. Yeah. 
Always cool. That was a, a very cool thing that they did. Uh, but this whole, anyways, this so they whole have, scene is kind of cheesy for me. This, like, the Pym Particle is the greatest invention you've ever made. And Hank's just like, you can't have it. Yeah, you can't handle the truth. He, yeah, I can't believe he's not about passing it on or whatever. I guess I, I guess we know the reason why he doesn't pass it on and why, why he doesn't give it to Darren and why, you know, all that. Because his wife went between the molecules and uh, is dead. Yeah, for sure. But he does uh, slam that dude's face into the table. Yeah, Which hardcore. was cool. Um, that looked, that was cool. That was a cool thing. Cool thing he did yeah. there. That dude, when he shows up later in the movie, was the only person I was like, is that the same guy? It was. I don't, I can never remember his name the whole time. I'm like, what is this dude's name? Yeah. And he, I've, I felt like. And he made that like, how's yeah. your face joke? And I was like, ha, 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 So that is that same guy. Yep. So that was his last day there. What did he do in the meet? I guess he opened PIM Technologies yeah, he after opened, that. He opened PIM Tech or whatever. Yeah. In San Francisco. Yep. And then we get the... Uh, is there any more comments you have on this scene? I think it's just interesting that the whole thing take place in San Francisco. That's a very, like, B-list city for this this kind of B-list Avenger. I think that's cool. Is that they straight away from, like, this takes place in New York or Los Angeles. I think Angeles. they could have gone more B-list than San Francisco. You seem to think San Francisco is a much more important city than it is. We had this conversation recently. It's got the Golden Gate yeah, Bridge. Yeah, you listed it among, like, your top, like, five cities in America without Chicago on that list. Well, Chicago obviously makes the list. But, I mean, if you want to go for, like, a B-list city, I'm thinking, like, Indianapolis. Portland. Indianapolis is uh, a C-list city, bro. So is Portland. Portland's like a D-list city. Mm, Portland's uh, on the rise. Portland stock is up. Portland stock is up. But I'm talking like, I'm talking about like a s- proper small big city. I would, is what I I'm would, I would put Portland on the same level as San Francisco. This is completely irrelevant to the conversation, but. Yeah, no. Um, totally different. You would put Portland on the same level as San Francisco? At this point, Maybe yeah. I don't know anything about Portland. And they do have that TV Portland's show. Portland's on the rise. Stock is a going yeah, up. People I, like Portland. If you were, but like, what's the biggest small city? I mean, you're going to put, you're going to put uh, the dude that plays Darren Cross in it. Why not just put it in DC, right? Anyway. Marvel opening credits is still the flippy book thing. So we don't have the new montage in the opening credits. When does that happen? I don't know. That's why I'm cataloging. I'm it imagining it's uh, in the next movie, like phase three. Phase three. You think that's when they kick it off? Well, because it definitely happened in Spider-Man. Spider-Man. It definitely happened in Thor Ragnarok. I have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I can't remember whether it happened in Doctor Strange, and I can't remember whether it happened in uh, Civil War. Was that what's next? Civil War. Civil War. Civil War. Yep. Civil War. We'll see you in January yep. on that one, by the way. And then Doctor Strange, and then uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And then Guardians, and then Thor. Thor Ragnarok. Scott's getting beat up in prison, and he thinks it's a regular prison fight, but it turns out he actually knows the dude, and it's like his his like getting out ritual or whatever, because mm-hmm. they talk about it in the next scene, and he's like, oh, what happened to your eye? And 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 Luis is like, oh, yeah, I still got the scar above mine, too. Yeah, did you realize they were like cellmates? That's how they know each yeah, other? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't realize it before then, but it, they straight up said it. That was like the first yeah. sentence they had together. Yeah, I'm not going to miss my celly yeah. getting out. Yeah, and Luis is like, oh, yeah, man, you're going to have a hard time finding a job. And Scott's like, I'll be fine. I have a master's in electrical engineering. And then, and then he cuts Robbins. to a scene of him working at Baskin Robbins. I thought it was, the whole Baskin Robbins thing I thought was absolutely hilarious. Oh, like hysterical. The, His manager calls him back and he's like, listen, man, Scott, what's up, buddy? What you did was great. Awesome. Loved it. Loved it. Perfectly on brand. Great. But we're going to, oh, of course, we're going to have to fire you. Perfectly on brand. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're gonna have to fire you because we can't just hire a criminal. Right. But uh, you know, I also love feel the- free to grab a mango fruit blast on the way out. And Scott just rolls his eyes and then cut again. And then he's got it, and he has the mango fruit blast. And I'm just like, <laughs> I I love how they show you like like you know Scott's a criminal, but you don't know what kind of criminal he is. Like you know he's like a you're assuming he's not like a, a violent right. criminal, but it's, they even yeah. give you like is he an angry criminal? Because they've got the customer who's like, I'll have a uh, burger, please, and then he's like, okay, uh. Uh, pretzel and mustard, or whatever he says. Yeah. I'll he's take like, whatever you got hot and fresh. Scott's just like, he's like, oh man, all right, okay. Well, this is Baskin Robbins, so <laughs> he kept his. To be fair, man. he kept his cool way better than I would. Oh, please. But it's like, is you know, it's making that social commentary. Like, what do you do about the idiot customer when the customer's always right? Uh, oh, so I, I thought hate that was the funny. Customers always right mentality. Customers frequently wrong, and I've been wrong as the customer. Have you? Oh yeah. I'll tell you, I got one one day. I uh, was at Harris Teeter in uh, Newport News. And uh, there was an olive oil that was in the wrong spot. And below it, it was like this bottle only olive oil. It was like a gallon. Yeah. Like a ton of olive oil. Like three ninety nine. Yeah. Which is an, if you, if you don't buy olive oil frequently, that's an insanely low price. Right. 
like something that should cost like $28. So we took it up and we scanned it and they were like, oh, this is $28.99. And we were like, uh, no, it said $3.99. And then I went back there. Turns out this bottle only was also referencing like a four and a half ounce bottle. Yeah. And uh, I was wrong. Yeah. I had a similar thing happen to me at H&M one time. And I, this is about as close as I've ever come to leaping across a desk and going to jail. But for yeah. like beating the ever loving crap out of an H&M. Uh, and you were wrong. I was, I, well, I was, I was air quote wrong okay okay because they had this like big sign over a a shell of rack of clothing right yeah and it was like everything this rack 4.99 okay okay pretty simple so i, I grab a shirt off of it i'm like this is a great shirt man it's normally good looking shirt normally like 20 bucks or whatever i'm like this is awesome have on it did not have Groot on it i don't really think h&m does like graphics hmm any shirt can have Groot on it. What? Yeah, that's what I've decided. <laughs> you can put Groot on any shirt. Okay. Anyway, um, so I grab this shirt and I go take it up there, and she's like, "Oh, it'll be twenty bucks." And I'm like, "Oh, but like it's on the shelf that says it was four ninety nine." And she goes, "What shelf?" I'm like, "That one right there." And she goes, "Well, it's twenty dollars." I was like, "All right, I'm gonna go look. I'll be right back. Like, I'll get back in line." Like, I went and looked, and it was like everything this shelf four ninety nine. Okay. And I took it back, and I'm like, "Hey, it still says that." And she goes, "All right, let me let me talk. Let me let me talk to my manager." And I was like, "Okay, I didn't ask for that, but sure." Um, this th- and this is one of those situations where you're not trying to get one over. No, on not at all. I'm like, I just want the shirt. Like, if it's gonna be twenty dollars, I don't want it. If I if it's not gonna be twenty dollars, if it's four ninety nine, I'll take I do it. Want it? Like, I'm not. <laughs> Right, I'm not pressing the issue. I'm just if it's in the to, wrong spot, yeah. just tell me. No, but she was like, yeah, it's supposed to come off that shelf. And I'm like, okay. Like, that's because of what I said. I was like, is it in the wrong spot? She's like, oh, it comes off that shelf. And so the manager comes up and she goes, oh, no, everything on that shelf is four ninety nine and up. I'm like, it doesn't say that anywhere on the... Th- oh. It doesn't say that anywhere on the th- price on the tag, right? And she goes, right. yeah, it does. And makes me walk back with her. And it says it in, like, literally, like, comically small font mm. that was halfway covered up by the actual thing holding the sign up. Mm. To the point where it looked like just it was a smudge on the paper. Did you get the shirt? Twenty dollars not a bad price for a shirt. No, I didn't buy the Depends shirt. Upon the shirt, I didn't buy the shirt. Um, it was like I, you know, I didn't, I didn't need it. Um, but I wanted it for for five dollars. But like at that point, it could have been free, and I didn't want it. I was just yeah. so like, are you freaking kidding me? They're like you're gonna play this game, and she was like, I hate she, when you have to. And go so back. she goes, she goes, look, we can do it like this as long as one item on the shelf is four ninety nine. I'm like, yeah, no, I get how it I'm going to rip like, your legally. esophagus out. <laughs> like I just kind of, I kind of um, looked at her. I, I looked at her and I said, politely, you can go f- yourself. And I walked out of the store. Did you really? I did. I said that to her face. Wow. No, but like, I, I get the customer's not always right. But like this person had a, a Draco Malfoy level of smug about it. Right. That she was like, right. she was waiting for somebody to ask about it. Right. It's almost like she doesn't realize that, you know, like, obviously if it's four ninety nine and up, only one thing needs to cost $4.99. Right. I get it. Like, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't say that. <laughs> I get a, how the process, it does not say I get that how the sale would work. That a normal human can read. Like you have to be right. Paul Rudd in Ant Man. Right, right. Just to, ooh, I like that. Bringing it back on brand. Uh, speaking of the brand, real quick, I'm getting off brand again, real quick. Okay. My birthday four days ago, six days ago, upon release of this. Uh, I had a great birthday this year, Ethan. You wanna, you wanna ask me why? Why'd you have a great birthday, Tyler? Well, I, I turned 25 this year, so I'm like a grown up now, right? Like, insurance costs less. Uh, but with the great thing about this birthday was, was probably for the past six birthdays, like 18 to 24, I felt like I was getting. Like proper grown up, yeah, like adult presents. presents. And and listen, the fact that anybody gives me anything for any reason is incredible. I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth. I've never received a bad present. Let's just get that out for of the sure, way right for now. For sure, uh, like because that's the craziest thing. Why would anybody buy me anything? I don't need anything. Uh, but this year, I got like like toys, like like toys, yeah, like stuff that I want, right? That like that like I don't need. It's not like a shirt I can wear to work. It's not like uh. You know, like a necktie. I get a lot of neckties for gifts and stuff. And those are all great gifts. I wear them to work. They look good, whatever. Just moving on with your day. But this year, I got like a little baby Groot bobblehead pop figure. I got uh, two Guardians of the Galaxy t-shirts. This was obviously right after we had done Guardians of the Galaxy when people did their shopping. So everybody thought that was what I wanted. Um, I got two like gaming mice. One for the office and one for the office at home. I got I got like dvds that like i wanted to own sure. i got baby driver and i got uh guardians of the galaxy volume 2 and spider-man homecoming it was like the coolest thing like i got like presents right i don't know it was it was like mind-blowing right. i feel like there's something it, there's something great about getting a gift that you need it was like something that you can use but there's something almost even greater about getting a gift that's just somebody's like I thought of this thing, or I thought of you when I saw this thing. Like, it doesn't have to be and like, a, oh, you, you know, I got you a necktie because I figured you need a necktie. It's like, I saw this thing and I was like, 
Tyler needs this. Right. He does those Marvel movies. Right. He probably wants this on DVD. And you're like, absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. Yeah. And and it's the, the Blu-ray and digital copy. So I'm really, uh, it's already on my, uh, it's on my iPad. So it's ready to go. Uh, nice. That being said, I do need neckties. If anybody out there is curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could like really use some dress shirts. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know, it was it was just a really cool experience. Uh, you know, for dinner we didn't go to like a super fancy restaurant. We, we went to the bar that's down the street from my house. You know the one I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I am over the fancy restaurant for birthday dinner thing. I mean, I like Carabas or Outback. I know you don't like Outback in general, but like that level of rest. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, sidebar: One last thing I got for my birthday because I don't want to miss something. I've named all but one present. I also got those uh, Beats wireless headphones. Um, uh, then listen, to sound snobs. They're for listening to music in the meantime. Anyway, I absolutely love them. the Beats Pro X. They charge with a with an Apple charger. Did you know that? Yeah, I mean, I you, you told me that, um, and I just immediately thought of of how terrible that was. No, it's I, amazing. I mean, you can say that, but like, I what do I just have lightning cables lying around? The answer is no. I've well, it has an eight hour lifespan, and what I do is I have two next to my bed and uh every night i charge two things well i charge three things my watch is always charging every night i recently found myself in possession of an iphone x um and i was the biggest critic of it but i said that i was going to be the biggest critic of it and then i'd probably have one within six months mm. i straight up i said that to you i was trying to find the text i said it but i was like man this thing pisses me off like it's 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 a lot of money and it's like it's not worth it and i'm totally want one in fact, there's an a, there's a scrapped episode of a pilot podcast that you and I did uh, where you talk about how you would not get it, and I talked about how I would get it, and now here we are. I have the and iPhone I straight up, Plus, I was like, and you have the iPhone X. I was straight up like, you know, and I and I admitted to myself whether whether I said it out loud or said it on Twitter or what. I was like, I d- I'm gonna say I don't want one of these things right up until I drive to the Apple Store to get one. Like, yep. But this battery life on this thing is freaking incredible well let's uh let's get back on brand so we get a, g- a great scene here where right before sky gets fired there his manager is like yeah basket robbins finds out basket robbins always finds out everybody says everybody that. says that they get back to the apartment and and luis has like people there and he's like oh i got fired from basket robbins and ti's just like basket robbins don't play man <laughs> they're like basket robbins yeah the russian guy's like basket robbins finds out <laughs> <laughs> i was like this is this is this is what i came here for this is the kind of comedy writing that gets me suckered in oh th- i mean luis and his buddies are hilarious Oh, this absolutely they definitely I, do not get I, enough screen time. i want i want like 20 minute videos of luis narrating all the marvel movies just beginning dan yeah no like like yeah just to run the whole plot down where he's just like yeah so i got it from a friend of a friend who told me that you know tony stark was building this uh you know arc reactor in his basement and it just does, does the voiceover thing where like everybody's uh, talking excuse like excuse me luis. tony stark built that in a cave no, I'm talking the, the original arc reactors. Big one. The big one. Oh, the big one. Okay. Yep. Um, we get to introduction to the Luis's friends. The I don't know either of their names, actually. No, me neither. I'm, I'm pulling Kurt up and right Dave. Now, Kurt and Dave. Kurt and Dave. Sure. Yeah. Kurt is the Russian guy, uh, and uh, T.I. is Dave. So Hank's got a whole a whole lab now. He's got Pym Tech, and he seems like he's been away for a while because he kind of walks in, and everybody's like, oh, Dr. Pym. Ooh, there he yep. is. And Darren yeah. Cross is running the show. Pete Russo, big, tall, weird-looking bald dude. Uh, yep. Darren Cross, sinister name. Uh, and we get introduced to Hope, who is uh, Hank Pym's daughter, Hope Van Dyne. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I just looked that up now because she never gets a last name, but that's okay. It's still, like just credited as that. Uh, she is Jane Van Dyne's daughter. Uh-huh. And um, she's not super thrilled with Hank. Seems like he's been kind of absent from her life for a while, and she's not uh, really happy about that. But Darren's got this whole new idea. He's going to be the new Ant-Man. And by that, I mean he's going to be the Yellow Jacket. The Yellow Jacket. I love that they all got, like, insect-themed names. I think that's so silly. They couldn't be, like, uh, I don't know, something else that's small. They're like, so, like, like, when he's in ant mode, he is considerably smaller than an ant. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. You think he's not small? I do not think ant? he's smaller than an ant. Ants are pretty small. Like, your average... Just regular black ant. I guess you're right. I guess they're I'm pretty small. Of, like uh, the scene where the where the rat is there. That's what I'm thinking. of. The rat's ginormous. Yeah, the rat looks big compared to an yeah, ant. Yeah, well, the rats are big. Have you Foot. ever seen a rat like in person? Maybe. Like not a mouse. Like a like a full on like rat. Like a wild rat. They are no. large animals. You, have you seen a rat yeah. trap? It looks like just a gigantic. Yeah. Uh, Why have I seen rat? When have I used rat traps? I've like used a ra- oh at the restaurant. Gotcha. Yeah. That that'd be a thing, but like gigantic mouse traps. Anyway, so he's he yeah, he's ant size and and uh you know because what's worse than ants bees nobody likes yellow jackets mm. 
Nobody likes yellow well, jackets. Bees are, and yellow jackets are not the bees that are disappearing that are the ones No, when to be we're talking about, about bees, what I'm talking about bees because apparently I'm the guy that talks about bees. <laughs> um, somebody yeah. recently identified me. They were like, oh, you're Ethan. You're that guy that tweets about bees. And I'm just like, yeah. what a strange thing to say. Yeah. Marvel and Like, bees. out of all the things I talk about, yeah, I occasionally tweet about bees, mostly because I think that bees are dying at an alarming rate is a funny joke. Uh, I know it's not a joke. Colony collapse disorder is a terrible thing, but we're bouncing back from it. Bees are doing well again. Um, I actually keep up with bees pretty well because I make these jokes. Um, yeah, and well, and you know, the communities we're a part of also keep me informed for sure, on the For sure, situation. but like I tweeted something, and, and what she referenced was I tweeted something about like, it was when that I don't want to talk about sex meme was happening on Twitter. What? Or no, not that one. It was the the I don't want small talk. I want it, and and people just kept saying other things they wanted to talk about. That was the thing, so I was like, <laughs> but, uh, so I I, t- I basically right, tweeted was like, I, was like it, I don't want small talk. I want to talk about bees <laughs> and how they are no longer dying at a such an alarming rate and bouncing back from colony collapse disorder. And she referenced that. She's like, you're the guy that talks about bees. I'm like, oh man, what is? I'm by no what means a, an authority what an on identifier. Bees. You're the authority now. I even. guess so, man. They were like, yeah, I know everything I know about bees from you. They didn't say that, but you're like, that was the vibe. You, I got. Instead of that, instead of the authority, you're the buh authority. I'm. I, I'm smiling like an idiot. It's right a great now, joke. So it's know. a great joke. <laughs> bees. Um, yeah, what's worse than ants? Bees. Yeah, nobody likes yellow so what jackets. What do ants do? They steal sugar. <laughs> what do yellow jackets do? They suck. <laughs> so we had a problem when my band was on tour in that every time we'd stop for gas, the van would just be swarmed by yellow jackets. <laughs> Why? No Why idea. would that happen? No idea. It was like over the course of a few days. And we were, we were driving through four or five different states. We would stop and there would be yellow jackets. Was there like a yellow jacket nest on the outside of the van? You no, think? we checked like very cl- like we tore the van apart trying to figure out what they were after, what they're coming for. We did a clean out like nothing helped. Uh-huh. But yeah, so we <laughs> yellow jackets. So it, it was like and that's still pretty fresh in my mind. It was just a couple months ago. So he started talking about the yellow jacket. And I was like, Ugh, yellow jackets. That's right. I mean, it's a super easy thing to make a villain out of. Who likes yellow jackets? Nobody. I don't. I don't like bees. I don't like being stung by bees. I'm not allergic to bees, but like, if there's a bee in, around, or about me, I will generally get up and like pretty much run away. And people are like, every time somebody's just like, somebody will call me out and be like, "Wow, it's just a bee." I'm like, you just sit still. They'll they'll go away. Yeah. Well, I don't. You know. You know what? You know what? Sit still and bees investigate. What? Literally plants. Yeah. Plants yeah. sit still. So you know the plant can't run away, and there's other. If I'm if I'm gonna, if there's six people standing near me, I'm gonna dip and let the bee take on one of them. So uh, Darren Cross is becoming the yellow jacket. He says, "Oh my gosh. for a peacekeeping mission, he's gonna create super soldiers." Never heard this one before. Oh, I know, right? Uh yeah, super soldiers. Oh my god. Because that's gone so uh, well for th- everybody who's decided to create an army of super soldiers so far. Well, Shall I list well them? For that. It worked out pretty well for that German dude who made Captain America. He made one. Yeah, he, like, takes out an entire army by himself, so. Yeah. Well, he didn't want to make well, any more. That... Howard Stark didn't want to make any more. It was just Colonel whatever his name is, Phillips. Colonel right. Phillips. Was like, was like, I can use a hundred of these. Yep. Uh, that propaganda film that uh, Darren Cross plays, where he's like, the. The, the Yellow Jacket the, will be the next evolution of human engineering or whatever. Right, and it's got, like. It's the greatest soldier because it can do surveillance and take out uh, yeah, enemies and it can just, in popular cities. It can cities. murder you, the U.S. government's allies without anybody knowing about it. I'm like, yeah, but well, you can't say that. Right. And what it does. <laughs> like the CIA is not, just, is not going to Shows briefings. footage of it in like in, in, in like New York yeah. getting into like the president's limo and the president's limo crashing. Right. Like, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it's supposed to be like, you know, taking out a world leader wherever but right. it looks like new york right. <laughs> and like the cia is not going to briefings from any tech company and they're like we can help you murder your domestic enemy or your foreign and domestic enemies right <laughs> it's like it's implied that you can use these you know radio controlled ISBM drones to take out people uh but you're not you're not sitting you're saying they're surveillance drones they're not saying you're gonna go to right. pakistan and murder a bunch of people with these right and <laughs> i thought it was so funny the whole thing is hilarious um and what are those little laser things supposed to be are they like lightsaber caliber labors lasers they can like shoot through anything yeah. and they do yeah. that's the tech i care yeah, about exactly forget the rest of the suit make guns out of that you know what tech never comes back just like every other cool piece of tech in the avengers series never comes back yellow jackets suck i don't know where it is in the movie but let's cut ahead uh luis gives him the tip i think that's actually the next thing uh, uh he wants yeah to make we sure... see um no there's the, there's the daughter's birthday he shows party, up his daughter's birthday party he gives her a weird demonic rabbit thing she and loves she's just it. like oh my god uh, i love, I love the daughter. this I love... because it comes from her dad and she is idolizes her dad right 
And, and I love the chemistry between daughter and uh, Paul Rudd on screen. I think it, it's really well done. I think she's a good actress for a little four-year-old. Uh, I love that she's missing her two front teeth. Anyway, moving on, he gets back. He gets the tip um, on what's going on. We get Luis's awesome scene. Oh, yeah, that's which so is super good. Cool. So good. The narration uh, thing cracks me up. and gets me every single time. And it's almost like I don't even know how to explain how much I like it. I just love yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then – Get her like a long – they, uh, Luis explains the whole thing, and Paul Red's like, okay, so old man has a safe. He's gone for a week. It's really all I needed. Yeah. Well, he needed to know that the tip was airtight. That's yeah. why he says it. Um, so then we get this awesome little heist scene where we get to see Paul Rudd being resourceful. Yeah, like a whole montage of the preparation, and then and then he climbs up a wall, disables an alarm, and creates a national treasure like fingerprint thing. And Oh, that was the dumbest thing in the whole world. Oh, well, okay. Like, by the okay. time this movie came out. Listen, man. By the time this movie came out, the, like, thumbprint off of a doorknob thing had been played out and myth-busted enough that I think, like, obviously, I'm suspending disbelief enough to think that a man can shrink down to the size of an ant. Yeah. But I'm more upset that he got a I was going to say, they found a, 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 uh, like, elemental particle that can shrink the distance between atoms, like, at will, without any consequences. And you're worried about a fingerprint. Well, yeah, Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. Okay. Because not only that, like, when he gets it off, it's, like, perfectly in the center of it's oh it's so stupid. i mean it, it but it happens for like 30 seconds i know i know anyway um, and he gets um, in and, and the, uh, the russian guy's like he is in like the flynn i don't get that what's the joke it's, there? it's just in like flynn who's flynn? Errol flynn like uh like the pirate guy i'm unfamiliar it's with just this a phrase character. it's a phrase yep. people say yep. that people say in like you say flynn. that i don't say that older people say that in like flynn yeah. flynn rider you talking about tangled nope rapunzel nope mother knows best ethan i'm not talking about that at all uh he's like He's, he, they get to the big door. He's like, "Oh man, safe's a carbon bale. It's made of the same steel as the Titanic." And then all the, the the buddies go off on a tangent about like how Titanic ended, and he's like, "Nobody survived." He's like, "Well, the girl survived. She was able to throw thing off boat." Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was funny. That was a good little thing. I I uh, don't think his uh, methods for cracking the carbon bale would work uh, based on all the other heist movies I've ever seen. It could not possibly be just that simple but i could be wrong maybe because it's you know a hundred year old safe yeah it doesn't have you know any wiring security put into yeah. it but isn't the point of those saves that like it doesn't need wiring security it's like if you crack the glass behind it it can't ever open i don't know if it's one of those or not apparently it's not because he drills through it and it's like a not huge deal and yeah um but he's just like ice expands metal doesn't i mean the, the theory's there but would it like explode off the wall probably not i don't know liquid nitrogen does some crazy true. stuff that makes physics all true, wonky true it is very cold it's like super cold I, did he bring the liquid nitrogen with him it looked like it was just kind of sitting there no the water no, was no, 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 that there. was yeah. the water the water was just sitting there the water and uh the the i guess millionaire i don't know what tax bracket hank pym is in but i guess the millionaire just has an air mattress in his basement and like old comforters yeah, i mean Water. and it's a basement and a in a gallon of water it was also set up for him to be able to, to, to steal, steal it. yeah yeah that's true um, but he gets the the what he calls the old motorcycle suit and we see that he's being monitored by a robot ant and then not a robot ant an ant with a it's right, a live, right. a live ant, ant with, with a camera, camera on it. its head um and then uh we get to see some of some of Corey Stoll's uh darren cross's madness going on because we get a quick scene where he like uh vaporizes a sheep and they vaporize a senator first yeah or you something? skip past that oh yeah. cool god's in the bathroom back at his place puts the suit on and like just clicks the button and shrinks and we get the like he's in the bathtub scene yeah this was this is like the first of many scenes in this movie that really take advantage of like uh miniature photography yeah. what do you think of how this movie was oh shot? it's cool it's cool. It's it looks. Cool. It I ended agree. up looking very cool. They did really well with yeah, it because they I could agree. have done very badly with it. Poorly. Poorly. Whatever. Mm -hmm. It could have been bad. Now, what is bad? bad? But it what is bad. bad about the scene is the voiceover. You don't like it? It's like not synced up very well. You do, it doesn't feel like it's in the suit. Yeah, it just it like it feels like they added it in post, which I'm sure they did. But it feels like they added it in post, and it's not supposed to feel like they added it in post. Right. Like, it feels like it was a last like, minute thought, which it wasn't because it clearly in the script because it wouldn't like fit without it i'm so confused does Luis come home and he's like oh i wonder where scott is oh he's not in the bathroom better take a shower yeah. i mean i guess he probably got he probably got home from work he's like i'm gonna take a shower like whatever he doesn't have a job whatever he got home from somewhere and decided he wanted to take a shower I it guess. was a, it, that is entirely for the purpose of like scott getting like drowned out of the bathtub yeah i thought the water thing it was looked cool. cool it looked very cool 
Um, yeah. Clawfoot tub, man. They might not have the nicest apartment, but they got the nicest got bathtub. Clawfoot tub, man. That's a, something I don't have. I don't even have a bathtub. Uh, you don't, I don't have what? Bathtub. You know what? Um, but yeah, so we, we see him get through, get out of a lot of situations in this. He gets out of the bathtub, like through the floor, um, manages to get himself off a record player, not get squished by whatever giant rave is going on, apparently underneath his apartment. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was weird. weird. And then I guess that's just kind of the apartment. And then he goes through a in. floor. Well, it like looked like a nightclub. Yeah. And I thought, oh, maybe they live above a nightclub. And it's like he went through another floor, and it was like another apartment from like a woman from the 1940s yeah. vacuuming her floor. vacuuming her floor. And then he gets the giant rat and freaks out and returns the suit. Well, and then he flies out and uh, he lands on some dude's car. Is that dude somebody? Uh, yeah, I think so. I thought that would have been a good spot for the Stan Lee cameo. Where was the Stan Lee cameo? It was either in the post credit scene or, like, right at the end. Yeah, I I didn't ever notice it. Um, So Scott returns the suit and uh, goes back to jail. Yep, and uh, something happens in the jail cell where Michael Douglas has ants covering the camera. camera, Which is gross. And, like... And nobody in the police station is like, hey, we can't see into that room. Yeah. Isn't that unusual? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like They would have said something. What? Yeah. What? But they what, uh, he gets the ants to bring him like the shrunk down suit, and then he gets in the suit and flies away on a flying ant. Antony. And, yeah. Is that is that implied to be Antony? He's yeah. 247. He doesn't have a name. Is he 246? Yeah, there's a... No, he's 247. There's a bunch of yeah. ants. I think it's interesting. He's got like this number system for them, and then later on, there's no like catalog. No. Well, no, he literally like... says he has a name. He doesn't have a name. He has a number. Do you know how many ants there are? Which is a lot. Yeah, but but like the fact that he's like counted up to two forty seven and assigned that many is like that's weird. You never call any of that the other ones by a number. But I guess yeah, it's just supposed to set it up so that like don't get emotionally attached to them. They are expendable. They can die. It's not a problem. Plenty of ants. There's an estimated ten trillion ants in the world right now. Yeah. Huh. How many are in your house? Uh, I have no idea. Hopefully none, but nine likely trillion. <laughs> <laughs> nine trillion of the world's ten trillion ants are in my apartment. <laughs> that sounds odd. That would be. I'm pretty sure they would be occupying every available space. Yeah, they absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How many ants can you fit in this room? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm feeling like my skin crawled just thinking about it. Oh God. Well, sir, instead of filling it with ants, I would fill it with dollar coins. (laughs) Because we can we can turn pennies into other forms of money. Yep. So basically he passes out um on top of the ant that is flying away because the ant needs to fly at like plane altitude for some reason. Well, and it's giving him vertigo and like they address the fact that the ants aren't very fast. But then later in the movie, I feel like the ants can fly faster than most yeah, things. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but they're like, yeah, you need to hop on the police escort because we want to get you five blocks out. And then it's like, well, what's the what's the point of that? If I, I you know, I asked myself that same question, but I don't. I don't. But I mean, I'm not gonna. It. I'm not gonna put too much time into it. I think it's just again, it's just an opportunity for a shot. Yeah, for sure. So he wakes up and um, he's in bed in Hank's house. Hope is there. There's some yep. giant ants surrounding the bed, and she says that they're going to keep an eye on him when she can't. And he goes downstairs, and they're having he or Hope and Hank are having an argument about like how they don't need Scott. And she's like, "I can just be in the suit." And Hank is like, "No, you can't for no reason whatsoever that I'm not going to tell you." And um, yeah, she totally doesn't get. She has it. no idea. She's like super Which anti-Scott. Is like, <coughs> she's anti-Scott because like she knows how to do the whole right. thing. Right. Like Scott, that not only can hank pym do it but another person can also do it let's bring in a third guy who doesn't know anything about well, listen man that suit is not cut for a woman so clearly she's put it on and been just saying before just saying you can't can't have an ill-fitting suit in a marvel movie it's got to be skin tight skin t- it doesn't seem skin tight on him no i actually thought i made a comment about how it's like kind of looser than everybody else's costume yeah like i feel like you know the obvious comparison everybody makes and it's even made in this movie is that it's like uh iron man Right, yeah. but it's it's really not. It's almost more like Star Lord's suit. Uh, Star Lord's pants are pretty skin tight, bro. Yeah, but his like Ravager jacket is not. He dresses like Han Solo. Yeah. Star Lord. Okay, but the mask looks more like Star Lord. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying, like Star Lord dresses like Han Solo. He's got like the the it skin also... tight pants and the boots and like the jacket. I will say this about Ant Man's suit: I would be okay if they updated it. I wouldn't be upset. I don't think they will, which is weird because they update everybody's costumes in like every movie. Um, they need but to I don't stop think they will. updating Cap's costume. I agree, man. Just put him in the silly Stars and Stripes yeah. thing and like just get yeah. over it. Now he's got a beard and he's wearing all black. I'm sure we're going to learn all about that because uh, yeah. the Avenger that handed off Iron Man to the next was Iron Man and Spider-Man. So Captain America is going to yeah. be in Black Panther and he's going to hand off the thing. 
He's, yeah, he's right. got a beard. He's dressed in black. Natasha's blonde now. Everything's changing. Yeah, yep. but that's, that's c'est la vie. Yep. Han Solo's old and dead now, yep. you know? <laughs> yep. Such is life. Um, but uh, but uh, I think what's got... His suit looks like it's, you know, something Hank Pym could have worn that many years yeah. ago. You know, like it looks like it was cutting edge and cool. The in, late 80s. What, World War yeah. Two or uh, late 80s. Whenever he was fighting whomever as the ant-man what war was he fighting uh the cold war tales to astonish yep. tales to astonish it's where ant-man makes his first appearance is that the name of the mm-hmm. comic oh yeah i had to look that up because it was a really out of place line uh, yeah. but well uh, so so, so that's so, like late 80s great, i guess great scene here great scene here great scene here mm-hmm. where um they you know he talks about like scott i believe everybody deserves a shot at redemption and scott's like i absolutely agree you know i'm i'm done you know i'm not gonna I'm not going to break into play any more places and steal any more shit. And he's like, what do you want me to do? And Hank goes, I want you to break into a place and steal some shit. That's exactly what he does. And I too. laughed just hard. That was the scene from the, the previews that I actually thought didn't make it into the final cut. It did. And then it, and then it did. Because it's a great line. It's a great line. Um, Top shelf yep. line. So he says he wants him to break into a place and steal some shit. And then we get another... Uh, it's cut of Darren Cross, who's still experimenting on his, his sheep. And he gets his tiny sheep... This works this time. Picks up a little thing. Ooh, I don't know if I finished. Did I finish my thought last time? About what? About the sheep. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say it again okay. if I did, and maybe it'll be in here twice. I think like I was saying they were like having a conversation, and they didn't even realize the cameras were rolling where I didn't. Evangeline Lily is like, I thought we were testing it on rats. And he's like, well, what's the difference? And I think that they did that whole thing so that they could be like, well, if he's testing on rats, then he just seems like a scientist. If he's testing on these beautiful baby sheep, he seems like a, like a villain, very yeah. evil purpose. Yeah, like a super evil yep. dude. Because he just like, vaporized that last sheep and he was like, okay, on to the next one. I guess they're lambs at this point. Yep. So he he gets his tiny sheep. Shoop. One shoop. One shoop. Two sheep. Oh, I think it's... One shoop. <laughs> One sheep, two sheep, red sheep, blue sheep. Red sheep, blue sheep. One sheep, one sheep, two sheep, red sheep, blue sheep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, he's got his I tiny sheep. Um, <laughs> we're good. We're good with the tiny sheep. Uh, he's all like, yes, I've got my tiny sheep here. It's in a tiny cage. <laughs> he shrinks the whole cage. What did you think that was about? Well, that was kind of strange. I, yeah, but I, I guess it'd he probably be pretty easy to the lose shoop. the tiny sheep. <laughs> I'm glad you're getting enjoyment out of this. <laughs> Shoot. It's such a funny word. It's a way better word than sheep. But they're lambs. I mean, yeah, okay. Whatever. Lamb chop. It's a oh, sho- shoop man. is the noise that uh the the scary shoop. scary bank sucker things make. The like the what? thing that, that only people's parents use where you like oh. deposit a check at the bank. Only people's parents use. <laughs> Have you ever used yeah, one? I am. I will. One. I'm never gonna drive through at the bank because I will drop this check or cash in this windy outside. Yeah. And two. I'm not going to the not talk to a person right. drive. I'm just window. going to the freaking ATM. I'm going to the ATM, or I'll go inside and talk to the teller. Like a yeah, but like if I'm depositing a check, I'm gonna go inside. Like again, because I'm gonna drop yeah, the cause... check. And I don't really know what to do with it. I'm not entirely sure if I need to fill out a deposit slip or not because I've deposited about Let's, seven checks in my whole life. Well, and here's the other thing is I, I've i driven just about every size car known to man. And uh, none of them are the right size to to talk to somebody in a drive-thru. I mean, I drove a 1986 Toyota Celica. I understand. I'm like, okay, yeah. let me just reach up past the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Bill. Yep. So they're they're talking about how, how they're going to – take care of darren cross and scott's just like i think our first step should be to call the avengers and i'm like thank you thank you, you had why to would that not be the first thing so you that... why would you not just call up avengers hq and be like hi can i speak with mr stark please we have a super villain can i right and tony and tony <laughs> would just go in there and just be like i'm tony here. stark and uh just wreck I'm everything buying yeah. te- I, i'm buying yeah. pym tech <laughs> i would like to i would You're like to offer up. you billions and billions of dollars darren cross jail Bye. Yeah, done. Okay, but but then uh, you know, Pim is like, well, we don't want them dropping cities on people. No, we sit there too uh, busy dropping cities on people. Yeah. So right now, people are like, they're right now. You get a vision. Ha. Avengers. They are in right Sokovia. now. You get like a well, yes, but you also get uh, a view from like the politics of sort of the the non Avengers community that there is two sides. To yeah, this whole yeah, Avengers for sure. Thing. It's a very very phase three mentality. 
Um, right. There's people who like the Avengers and people who, and people like, who don't uh, like you guys the done yet. Right. Can we be done dropping cities on people? Like, I get it. You're very yeah, cool. Somewhere. But you also. Somewhere out there, the vulture is plotting his thing. He's just yep. stewing. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, uh, the vulture. But also, like, this doesn't, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, and then they uh, they train him a bunch, and they're like, we're going to teach you how to make the ants do what they got to do. And the whole time, and Hope then... is just like, why are we training him? I can do this. This guy. I already know how to do this. Yeah, but he's, well, and, like, I don't understand why he they ever even have to explain it to her. Why can't her reason be good enough that, like, no, Darren is close to you, and you are close to Darren. And uh, if you are not there, it's gonna look at weird. The right yeah. times, it's gonna right. look. She bad. can't figure that out, right? Like that's... But there's a great. This is a great montage of him learning to train because, like, he does the thing where they're like, "Okay, we want you to dive through the keyhole, but you need to charge big, dive small, get big again." And he's like, "Got it!" And just dive straight into the door like five times. Yeah. And does Super the thing funny. where he's like, uh, he's gonna punch Hope, and she's like, "Wow, that was weak." And he goes, "Oh, can you punch?" And she just knocks him out. Knocks him out cold. Um, and this is a good little training montage. He learns kung fu in like three yeah. days. Uh, they're like, "Yeah, Hope learned kung fu with Ra's al Ghul in uh, Nando Parbat." Yeah, or whatever. I don't think so, but uh, yeah, when you know she's the Black Canary or whatever. Nope. nope. Whatever. So Nanda Parbat or whatever, she's trained with Ra's al Ghul and Nanda Parbat yep. and uh, is, you know, the, the the empress of death or whatever. Of yeah, so Taekwondo. she can just wreck Scott, who is yeah, jacked. Black Canary herself. Scott is freaking jacked. Yep. Holy crap. I knew he was big. I knew that, like, there was one of those things where, like, Chris Pratt got huge for his role and so did so Paul they- Rudd. He got they put, huge for so his they role. They put Paul Rudd on, on the superhero program, right? The like the get ripped uh-huh. like a superhero program that everybody does. And they came back. He came back, and Kevin Feige, Feige, Feige was just like, "Wow, you got big, bro! Like real big. We need you to go lose like twenty five pounds." Yeah, dude. Yeah, huge. and then he went and lost more weight, like more muscle mass. And Dang. I was like, "Okay." Well, Paul Rudd is immortal. You know that, yeah, right? He doesn't age. Yeah, he's he been the same age since exactly he was exactly the same in every role I've ever seen him in. Yep. Good guy, though. Good oh, I love, Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd. I have yeah. no... I love yeah, you, man. Great movie. Uh, role models. So anyway, they're teaching him to control these ants, and we learn how, how Hank can control the ants with, like, a hearing aid thing. You just think uh, about it. You think about what you right, want and the it, ants he was to like, do. It, it stimulates their olfactory senses, which is sense of smell. So sure. that was interesting. But I guess he just makes them smell things. I don't, I don't know they whatever they do whatever yeah, he says so it's kind he, of dumb. he they scott's like like not he can't, can't figure, figure it out he cannot get hang of the the ant thing and hope can she could totally do the ant thing she like swarmed the whole house of the ants and yeah and she like swarms yeah, the lights and, she, and, and like, then she runs out and uh scott goes and gets in the car with her and does and this is where i start uh, this is where i stop buying into scott is is this scene when he's like you know i'm expendable like your father just wants to protect you. And I'm like, stop trying to make him serious. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think he was too serious here because he even like cracks jokes at the end of it or whatever. Or he cracks jokes at the beginning of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I jive with what you're saying here. It's like, I don't know if I would put him in this spot. I don't Like there's nobody else that could have done it. Maybe it could have been like a self-discovery yeah, kind of thing. for sure. Anyway. Like where she catches like, you know, she overhears them talking or something, yeah. you know, but whatever. Drives but he knows forward. why. Um, he knows why they picked him, and like he like he says, he's expendable. He's just some guy that is good at it, but can can like go on without him. And he says like your father would rather lose than lose you. Whoa, yeah, boy. that was good. That was good. Um, and yep. then then he can do the ant control thing because he made his peace with hope. Yep. Yay. Yep. Uh, and then they Darren Cross oh, is like, hang, hang on, on. This, okay. Because this is important. This is important. Yeah. Because ahead. they walk back inside, and then Hank tells Hope everything about like your mother was the wasp. She died disarming a missile in the Cold War. And I spent the last day de- or the next decade in exile, like trying to bring her back. Yep. And then Scott ruins the moment. And everybody cries. Yep. Super proud yep. of him too. Yep. Hundred percent. Ah. And then Darren shows up, like right. Yeah. Then, Darren right? shows up, and um, no. And we get into the like no, the third act of the movie, right? I think so. Really? No, I don't. I can't think of anything else that happens. No, because this is where they go to the. Um, yeah. No, that that happens later. That happens after he comes back with the, the thing, because Hank Hank hides oh, duh. the thing. Oh, this yeah. is when they steal from when the they Avengers. Steal the, so he says you got the final test. Yeah, the final test is when they steal from the Avengers, and I don't really, it's like a security, like a signal decoy thing is what they call it. Um, they're like, it's in Stark's old warehouse, like Howard Stark's old warehouse in upstate New York. And as soon as they said it, I was like, yep, I know where we're going. Yeah, but I did not catch that I did. at first. Like, I didn't I didn't connect the end of Age of well, Ultron no, to this. Well, no, I connected it because watched I watched Age of Ultron. Ultron the last week. Right, yeah. That, 
this particular version of yeah. watching it, I was yeah. like, oh, they're going to go to the place. Um, but every other time, because I've forgotten. Yeah, he's Joel, like, no, they, fall, they fall down there and uh, out of the plane. And Hank is like, Scott, abort. You've been found out. And Scott's like, I got this, bro. Nobody saw me come in. And, and uh, he's like. What do you think of the fact that the, uh, uh, like, the fact that he can shrink is immediately not useful as, like, a invisibility cloak. Right, because Falcon's, Falcon's got the Falcon. goggles on, and he can. He was like, I can see you. Right, like, immediately, it's like, oh, your whole gimmick is useless yeah, against he, an Avenger. He, he pops okay. out of the tininess and pulls his helmet off and goes, hi, I'm Scott. And both both and Hank like, and Hope are just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you just showed your this face. This guy's an idiot. idiot. And... Then yeah. Falcon and, and uh, Ant Man have like a great fight scene where uh, Scott's just flipping in and out of being tiny, really well choreographed. Yeah, I it thought was this good. was super was good. cool. Uh, I always wonder in this scene if it was ever necessary for him to be big because if he can punch just as hard while he's small, like why would you he's, ever? Uh, go he's big He's not again? being made big. I think Falcon's doing it. I think oh, okay. Falcon's doing it somehow. There's a couple times where he does it, gotcha. but like I think Falcon's doing it somehow. But it's very yeah. cool. He, he uses the so. Ho- ho- blah, 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 blah. He uses, like, the, you will be displaced in space. Like, it's not just the fact that you become small, but it's the fact that you are no longer right. where you were. Right. You know? Like, yeah, no, that makes sure. any sense. He uses it to an advantage. He's finally got the hang of it. Um, yeah. And uh, he fights Falcon. He messes up Falcon's whole thing. Yeah, and, and Falcon's like, it's really important to me that Cap never finds out about this. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> you just got beat by an ant. Ant yeah. man. But, and uh, yeah, he retrieves Scott the got thingy the thing. inside the warehouse. And comes back and he's like how about the fact that i fought an avenger and didn't die and they're like all right let's not brag i thought that was super weird that all of a sudden uh hank pym is not all about him he's like let's not give you any credit scott it's like this whole movie has been about I you think giving him was, credit. i think hank is mad because he didn't listen because he oh, didn't listen well, and it worked yeah well because it, sh- it proves right. that he doesn't need hank right. pym he, the torch has been the, and that one darren cross yeah the torch at this moment has been passed right it's not even been passed it's been taken no, it was passed. Hank was like, I want you to be the Ant-Man. Yeah. But I don't think he was ready for him to be the Ant-Man. No, but he said he wanted it. He literally says, I want you to be the Ant-Man. And I'm like, okay, so torch passing. It's a really, like, straightforward, like, hey, we got the thing, and now you're the guy. Now you're the guy, yay. Uh, but Darren's here. Uh, now, now Darren here. shows and up. And he's just being super creepy, yeah. and... He does the hand on the yeah. shoulder thing, which is his signal that I'm going yeah, to kill you later yeah, in this he's, movie. He's like, I've got good news. Pimtech's about to be the most profitable company in the world. We're going to do 15 billion in sales tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. It's a lot of money, bro. Okay, pal. That's not even more profitable than WhatsApp. So. Pretty sure Facebook just bought them to crush them into oblivion. Because Facebook wants everyone to be like, here's Facebook Messenger. It's better than your texts. It's better than everything. It's better than iMessage. Use it. It's not better than iMessage. It is shockingly good. When you actually have a group in it, but uh, it, is, it uh, has one problem. I use it for a lot of groups. Um, it has one glaring issue. It, is it that you don't know when the little giant emoji is at its biggest? No, that's just like a thing. It's like a funny thing because you're, you're like, oh, I can, I'm a, I got it bigger than you. Ha! You're better than this. You're better at this. It's the fact that you can't add a caption to a photo before you send it. Oh, that is a huge problem. Because like problem. I'm trying to be funny in my group chat. And I'm trying to send the photo and say the line at the same time. Yep, you need to send the send the line first. It sounds yeah, like. but then I just set a weird line and then approached it with a photo, and it's just it it like it's it's an issue that I think would be very easily rectified, and it has no point in not being a thing. Uh, Darren's there. He does the thing where he puts his hand on the shoulder, which means he's gonna kill yep. him, and he leaves. Uh, and they're like he leaves and he calls he calls hope and they're like oh he's not even on to you hope and he totally is um, yeah totally yeah. on to him because he's just been standing there he heard them talking like that was so obvious to me like hank walks in the other yeah, room no, and 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 he's there he didn't like walk in at that point he's been there um but they're like we're we're gonna get in the water main to get through the all the new security that darren's putting in and they're like we need a team and scott's like i got a team and they're like you don't you don't got, got a team you want a team and he's like oh i got a team you want a team i got a team i'll get you the best Best darn so team. They bring in Luis seen. and the Russian guy and TI. They all have a job. Yep. Um, they're like the Warriors 3, but funnier. Yep. Yeah, they're all hilarious. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love them. Uh, yeah, and, and Luis is like, yo, nothing's going to scare me. Daddy don't get scared. And then Scott transforms and gets on his shoulder and Luis blips out. And Scott's just like, I thought Daddy didn't get scared. Daddy doesn't get scared, Ethan. I want yeah, and then um, we get another s- scene right after that where uh, like Hope is like, yeah, I just drugged them. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, she like slipped yeah, some Xanax she gave or whatever. Each of them half a Xanax, and then Hank started talking about the science of the suit. And they fell asleep, which I was like, okay, that's funny. But like, Xanax jokes aren't funny right now. This is a bad time. Bad, bad time for Xanax jokes. Yeah, yeah well, that was 2015. I know, I'm just saying. This I'm watching it now at the end of 2017. Like, Xanax jokes aren't funny anymore. Didn't yeah. age well. Didn't age well. Um, yeah, but then, so then we get the heist. Yeah, so uh, they all have their job. 
We get yeah. Act Three. Dave, Dave's the wheels. Kurt's the, the eyes three. in the sky, and Luis is uh, the fake security guy. And yeah, really, uh, the wheels. I I could not figure this out for the longest time. The reason that they're arresting Hank Pym is because he was. His yeah, he lawyer. was. He helped Scott break out. It's implied that he helped Scott break out of jail. That I did not catch for the longest time because you have to like read a text message to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yep. 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 You do. Um, but that is why they're arresting Hank yep. Pym at the door. So he, um, Luis gets in no problem, which is surprising. Um, he just goes through security and they're like, yeah, okay. Well, it's because Hope is in, like, he's in the system. He's in the system. Yo, I'm in the system. You're in the system, bro. Yeah. Um, uh, he gets in no problem at all. He's, he, uh, he yeah, he's walking thing. the building whistling. It's a small world after all. Uh, yeah. Yep. They, they did. They, I was like, that's a good, that's a subtle joke right there. Uh, Movie's very, very And the dude's so like. Small scale. Yeah. The dude's like, oh, I'm the boss here. And Luis is like, yeah, okay. And just knocks him out. And I was like, yo, bro. I was tight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then where are we now? We are, uh, yeah, it's basically yeah, a heist scene. scene. A lot, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. They um, uh they get the bullet ants to bite people. Uh, there's a cop out in this. You get the bullet ants to bite people. I'm cool with that because I believe that like bullet ants could bite people, yeah. right? That would be like a legitimate use for ants. Yeah, as I mean a weapon. they're the biggest on the I'm Schmidt paint scale. Yeah, I am not not a, oh, so one. They should be hurting people a lot more if that's the case. Like the people that were bit were like, "Oh, this hurts," but I didn't feel like they were like, "This is the worst I don't know, pain I've pretty ever." Much this is worse out. than childbirth. But they weren't like, "No," because uh, Darren gets bit by one. He's not like, "This is worse than childbirth." He's just like, "Oh, this sucks," and then he squishes the ant. Um, I guess okay, that's because so it's, he's got it's the not, pin First of all, it's not just the, the the index of overall pain ever. It's the Schmidt pain index for stinging insects. Oh. Uh, sorry, I thought that was clear that like it was like just for bugs. I didn't look it up ahead of time, but like I figured no. it was just for bugs. But I looked Did it up just now, up? yeah, because I just oh, I, okay. I, I didn't. It didn't occur to me that you were like comparing it to all pain ever. This is worse than the kidney stone. No, it's just Ouch. worse than any other bug. Still, this is worse than a, the wasp. Yeah, they looked like they were hurting a lot more than a wasp sting. That dude like passed Not out. Not to Darren. That's true. But there was a bunch of them. If you get stung by a bunch of wasps, Probably you're gonna pass not. out. What was I going to say about this scene, Ethan? I have no idea. What was idea. I going to say? Um, oh, there's a cop out in this scene. I know that they talked about it earlier in the movie and they had to like, that's why they talked about it. So they set it up so they could do this. Ants can't conduct electricity. Um, fire ants can. Well, those weren't fire ants. The fire ants were the uh, builders. No, those are, yeah, those are the same ones that, oh, it's the crazy ants, whatever. Wh- whatever, man. Ants, like when they were little crazy ants and he was in the ant hill, they were crazy ants that had like lightning in their butts. You're not responding uh, Because here. I'm reading was whether or not. Yeah, they can totally conduct electricity. It's a real thing. What? Yeah, raspberry crazy ants can conduct electricity. This is literally the most they are for some reason, and nobody knows why, attracted to uh, electric equipment, especially electromagnets. Oh my gosh! I'm not gonna lie to you. This movie earned its 8.2 just now. So that's a real thing. Crazy ants. Eight, what did I say? 8.2 8. 8. or 8.3? 8. I think. I think I said 8.3 because it scored at 82%, and I didn't want to match it, but that was about what I was gonna rate it. Um, that's crazy. So I didn't know that, but I still don't think they can fry a circuit board. I know they had little things on their backs, though. You don't have to, like, all call me out on yeah, that. I, mean, I saw it's that. Whatever, it happens. They fry the circuits. Um, yeah. But the power doesn't go out, or, like, the computers don't shut down. I they were just trying to fry the memory circuits. They were they were destroying the servers. So they lost all the, uh, like, information or whatever. Gotcha. They blew the building up anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, yeah, but, I mean, I think they were trying to bust the, like, cloud. Gotcha. And then they've got the, like, death ray shield that only clap trap yeah, can get yeah, through. Yeah. But then Scott, Scott drops the, through. like... Um, Drops the screw through it and it just vaporizes it. And then Scott gets through it and it's a trap. Oh, who would have thought? Who would have thought it would have been a trap? Who would have yep. thunk it? And who would have thunk it? Uh, uh, there's just a really, probably really bad line here. And when Darren's talking to to Hank and he's just like, what do you call the most, the only man who can arm the most powerful weapon in the world? And Hank's like, the most powerful man in the world. Oh, it's just super yep. cheesy. Super cheesy. This movie's super aware of itself as a superhero yeah. movie, though. Really easy to digest. And they do the, like, everybody's got uh, a gun thing here again, where it's like, Darren pulls out a gun and aims at a Hank, and Hope pulls out a gun and aims at a Darren. Then... Yeah, it's like the uh, scene in Pirates of the Caribbean 1, where they yeah. all pull out guns. Is it the first one? Uh, Yeah, I think it's, it's yeah, all of they're them. they're all pointing at each other. Yeah, it's a, little, it's yep. a fun little scene. And then uh, Scott jumps out uh, of the he glass. He uses the disc like, to like, explode the thing. Yeah, because I guess like if one part of the glass expands, it all expands. It doesn't yeah. all expand. I don't know. Um, Science, or I'll take it. But uh, Hank gets shot. Yeah, I guess he doesn't die. He does what not happens die. here? I don't. I, he just I gets shot. He gets shot in like the shoulder. For a moment. Yeah, but he gets shot from like point blank. Yeah, range. But, like in the shoulder. I guess. I mean, I he doesn't know. die. Looked pretty. Looked like it shot him through the lung. 
from I mean, from looked Wilde like it was like it. in his shoulder. No, this was more closer to the center of his chest, I thought. Like, if you watch when the bullet actually leaves Yeah, the I gun. didn't, though. I watched the hole that came later. Oh. Yeah. It, it looks like it's like through yeah. his lung. And it looks like it's coming from above. And it would go through, like, like go in maybe at, like, the top of his right peck, but then would come out, like, his right. kidney. Right. Oh, and that one guy from S.H.I.E.L.D. steals the, uh, the, 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 the Darren Cross particle, the, like, the yellow vial thing. Does mm-hmm. that ever come back? Like, does he, does he get stopped? Did I miss it? Did, does he get caught or killed or whatever? I don't know. I didn't even I catch it. I caught that he that stole happened, it, so, so, like, I'm feeling like this might be a thing that comes back. Or is he the briefcase that they're in? Is that the same briefcase that they end up in? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. They, they get in the briefcase, and they're, like, fighting. I don't know how they get from fighting not in the briefcase to fighting in the briefcase. Oh, there's, yeah, like, a helicopter, the helicopter, and they're fighting and then, on that. Uh, Meanwhile, Hope and Hank are trying to figure out how to get out of the thing, and he's just like, it's not a keychain. And it's a shrunken yeah. tank with a giant key ring sticking out the back of it. I thought that was cool. But I also just really sitting there cool. at the same time like, it's not a car. Not a car. I'm not wearing hockey pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so yeah, they, they get the tank, they get out of there, and then they blow the building up and shrink it into itself. Um, yeah, there's yeah. that great well, scene hold on, where- hold on, before this. Everybody okay, cries okay. every time, man. Derek Cross shoots Anthony. Anthony shoots dies. Anthony? Yeah, oh, I missed Anthony that gets entirely. shot. I read a review when we were originally talking about this movie a while ago because uh, BuzzFeed talks about this movie, and you and I were going to talk about what BuzzFeed said. Uh, oh, they, BuzzFeed said that Marvel couldn't make a funny movie because all their movies were too the same about this movie, but this movie was funny, and Thor Ragnarok came out like three days it later. Came out when I read know, that article. I was going to say it came out two years later. Really? But, right, but when I when I read that article. Um, This movie was funny. And then they also talked about an establishing shot in the beginning of the movie where they show the building they're in, but instead of saying Pimtech, it says, like, Cross Technologies on it. And and then, of course, later in the movie, there's a scene where Ant-Man runs through the scale model of the building, which was cool. cool. Um, But yeah, Cross Cross at this point lost his mind. He gets in the suit, and he's just, like, shooting the helicopter. Yeah. He's shooting everything Everything. to kill Ant-Man. He's, like, he's not worried about himself. He's in the yellow jacket suit. Um... Just wrecking the helicopter. And they get in the briefcase. And this is, like, yep. the best scene in the whole movie. Well, because first of Tell all, it just why. looks cool. that like It's flipping over and over and over, and they're, like, fighting against the walls of it. Second, he goes, uh, I will disintegrate you as as he falls onto the iPhone. And Siri is, like, playing Disintegration by The Cure. And it starts yep. playing, like, really, then, like, loud. Yeah, because yeah. they're in a briefcase. Well, and they're small, but yeah. it's cool. It, just, it, it, was, it was really funny. I liked it. I enjoyed it and, and this is again that that part in the movie where it's like we're gonna show you that it's this big epic scene between them and then we'll zoom out and it's you know you get kind of the scale yeah, of because they land in a pool is like it's like at the end of the day darren cross could win this fight well i guess he can't but uh you know like at this point if ant-man wins this is as small scale as the right. fight is because darren at the right. last piece of the puzzle to put an end to this wasp crap or this you exactly. know, jacket crap um and he tries to because he he's throws him into the bug zapper and then he makes this noise. Do you hear this noise that he makes? It sounds like a like a speeder from Star Wars going by, where it's like, Rah! yeah, yeah, I do. You know what I'm talking about? Weird. He made the same noise like four weird. times in this movie. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I don't know. I liked it. No, it's like a it's like a spaceship going by. What is it like? Something from Star Wars. I have no idea. I don't know what you're saying. Anyway, uh, uh throws him with the bug zapper, and then he's picked up by the cops. Cops take him away, and then the cops are like, you know what? You got to go fight him because he's at Cassie's house. And they go to Cassie's house, and they have the fight in the bedroom, and the top is the tank engine set, and you get this awesome small scale fight in the big scale movie. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, oh, you first know. of all, we get the freaking cheesiest line in the whole movie, where Scott goes, "Why don't you pick on someone your own size?" Oh, that's the I whole know, joke, but it's though, so man. dumb. That could have been the whole yeah, and preview. They're, and they're just whole throwing thing. like pieces of Thomas the Tank Engine trains at each other. And then it, it makes, makes Thomas gigantic. gigantic, and I was just like, Skyrim. <laughs> It's raining, it's raining trains. trains. I, I literally have "It's raining trains" written. <laughs> and uh, I love this this little uh, final act they've got here, uh, where they're they're fighting each other, and oh, you know, oh, in the oh, in her yeah. bedroom, they're not going yeah, big, they're small, big, small, small. They're just yeah, small. and and he does the sacrifice thing. He's like, I'm gonna yeah, have to shrink to sacrifice himself between the molecules to destroy the suit, and he gets real small. And he does the thing; he sacrifices real, it, but he can't small. stop being small. And it's just got this really like ambient voiceover of uh, of Hank being like, "You can't." Destroy destroy the regulator everything will get real small you'll just keep getting smaller and smaller that's how my wife died and then and you i was, also get i was hear cassie frustrated by that name. though because i didn't need to be told 
all of that. Like, I can remember that from 20 minutes ago. Right, on the yeah. exposition. Um, I think what they're clarifying there is that the regulator is what makes you small and keeps you the size of an ant um, instead of right. just continuing to I mean, to for sure, forever. but that was already said. Like, I don't know. That voice right. over, that no, voice I, over I just worked me. I didn't think it needed to be done. Um, but he can... Narration yeah. of any kind is never I can, He can hear his daughter and he gets the idea to use one of the discs in place of the regulator and that was cool. But, like, he probably could have caused, like, an atomic explosion in his daughter's bathroom or bedroom and just wasn't at all worried about it i don't know he did so but they show that he understands the regular like he's the, the the underlying thing that they they are swinging around to at this part they mentioned it right at the beginning so the master's in like electrical engineering he's like a genius criminal is that he is as smart as darren cross as yeah. hank pym but he's not getting any credit for it for right. the whole movie because he's a burglar but he can figure he out how to get out of and it he can figure out the regulator. Like it takes him like, he'd like they show scenes in that montage of him training where he's like messing with the regulator. And he's like, I think I know how to fix this regulator you've yeah. got here. And he's like, don't mess with it because Pim right. doesn't know how to fix it. Right. Because he's just the physicist. He's a theorist. Right. And Scott's like, I know how to work this stuff. Right. So I think that was, I think that was a pretty yep. cool way to do yep. it. And I thought it came out pretty nice. Yep. So everything is hunky dory. Um, Hank's asking him questions about the quantum realm, and he's like, I don't know anything. I don't know where your wife is. Um, but it's implied that his wife is definitely still out there, and yep. I'm sure she will make another... Or, uh, I'm sure she will make an appearance in the next movie. And... I, I'm not about that, I man. I mean, did you, not, did you not expect that? I didn't feel like... I didn't feel like there was a romantic interest between Oh, them no, she gives him the Marvel movie. once-over. It's when he doesn't have a shirt on. 100%. She, 100%. Oh, does she? She's just like, oh, Scott, what's up? They, they've got to have I, a love interest for everyone. <sighs> They have to. I don't know. I felt like she was going to end up being a much more like, uh, I don't like think that I think she will. I don't think it's their, that their love is going to continue because they're going to have to be partners. But that could, I mean, that was what Ant-Man and the Wasp were originally. I mean, yeah, but they're not like, I don't know. We'll see. But the whole movie is about Scott wants to get back to his daughter and he like, I guess, I guess he doesn't still love his ex-wife Yeah, I don't think so. She sucks. Because he says, I say this as your friend. No. You don't like her? But yeah, so they're, they're, and then, and then, uh, you know, uh, Hank catches them and Scott does the really awkward thing where he tries to get out of it. And he's like, wow, hope, I don't know what you're doing there. That's really inappropriate of you. And just goes to walk down the stairs and, and, uh, Hank is like, Scott, he goes, yeah. And he goes, you're full of shit. Scott goes, yep. And just walks out yep. and they're, his whole family's eating together and eating dinner together. You know, you got, you got Cassie, you got Paxton, you got the ex-wife, you got the giant aunt, everybody, everybody, mostly the giant. Oh my aunt. God. I would not keep that as a pet. You can't squash it. I mean, you could, you could. I mean, Nick Fury could. He's got to make it small again. Do you like that? Do you like that reference? Yeah. That's I mean, sly, sure. Just in case you're curious. And then when, right at the end, we get another Luis exposition, which is great because he explains that Scott gets to be an Avenger. Um, and they talk about some other Avengers, I guess. There are some future Avengers, possibly. I don't know what's going on. Um, you got a guy that can you know, like, we got a guy who jumps, got we got a guy, a guy who can... swings, got a guy who crawls up the walls. Yeah. What do you need? What do you need? And they're like, we need a guy that shrinks. But like, I, Luis cracks me up because he's, he goes, the, the whole beginning of it is like, he's at this art exposition and goes, you know, I'm like, obviously more of like a neo-cubist, but there was this one really nice Rothko. I'm just like, you would <laughs> not know who Mark Rothko is. But he does. That's the thing about Luis, surprisingly cultured. great. Because like, I am sure most people don't know who Mark Rothko is. I, I wouldn't. And I'm like yeah. an art guy. Um, um, look up the Rothko Chapel. It's really and, cool. And then there's, uh, well, he does that yeah. the first one too, where he's like, you know, I usually don't like reds, but there was a rosé exactly. that saved and the it's day. Just great. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Shockingly cultured yeah. Luis is. And then it ends. Scott gets to be an Avenger now. Um, and we see him again in the next movie. Yes, we do. Um, that was the no. post credit scene, wasn't it? There's the first no? post credit Oh, no, the post credit scene comes. There's two. There's two? Oh, oh did you not watch the, the second, second one? Oh, I don't man. know that I did. Okay. So the first post credit scene, um, we see that Hank has another wasp suit. And he's like, well, yes. Jane and I were working on it together, but we realized we were working on it. Or I realized we were working on it for you. So let's finish it. And so she gets to be the wasp now. Boom. Until yep. her mom comes back from the shadow realm. The shadow, shadow realm. realm. That's what I'm calling it now. Is Pegasus yep. doing this? Yep. The millennium, the millennium eye. eye. Yep. Um, so pretty pretty short thing there. You get to see the wasp, the wasp suit without arms. Yep. It looks cooler yeah, without uh, arms. They'll probably give it arms, though. They do. Fair enough. Okay. Fun fact. Uh, what's the second post credit um, scene? Describe it to me. I'm sure I watched it and I've already forgotten. So it's it just away. like, so you see, you see Bucky, uh, just like chained up in like a basement. Yeah, oh, I did and not see this. and Sam and Cap are just like, well, what do we do with him? Um, and uh, Cap is like, I don't want to give him to Stark. Like that's gonna be a mistake. And Sam goes, all right, I got a guy. And it ends. And he's talking about... I have no idea who he's talking about. I don't know what they're going to do to him, but I can't remember. I can't remember much about it. Uh, Civil War, but it then it just goes Ant-Man will return in Civil War. Yep. 
The Avengers two and a half. Yeah, pretty really much. Is what it should be called. <laughs> yeah. Well, but they don't. But, uh, they don't have. Uh, they don't have Hulk or Thor. Hulk. Because they yeah. did the whole Team Thor thing. It was it's hilarious. Funny. Absolutely hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Um, uh, so what does this mean for us? It means that the Civil War is yep. coming. Yay! And we'll take care of that in January. Uh, yes, we will. Just in case anybody doesn't know, we are taking a break through the rest of... This will be our last Marvel 2016, movie for a while. Or 2017 we'll, and a little bit into 2018. We'll be back to Marvel we'll in uh, like, uh, like the middle of January. mid Jan- yeah, it's basically when we return to Marvel, it'll be a new episode every week until after yep. Black Panther is released, and then we will obviously take a break <laughs> until, until Age of Ultron. Infinity. Well, not Age of Ultron. Because uh, we have Infinity no more War. Marvel. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if you want us to do like classic Spider Man or something, just like yeah, let but we us got know. some we got some stuff we'll do planned. It. We'll see if we go ahead with it or not. Depends on how much you guys like the episodes that aren't about Marvel. Um, we're not really sure where this is going yet, so we'll see. Ethan, I have a easy breakfast food on this one i need i need to know if you need to amend it okay. but well, i know we'll, we'll get there in a second is. so what okay. did you what did you like about this movie i liked a lot i think we we discussed a lot of this stuff at the beginning yeah, of the episode sure. i mean just give me a, give me a, um, liked, a recap on what you what, what were some standout um things that you liked about it i think here's what i'm gonna do i liked the characters yeah a lot if that makes sense like i liked the way they were developed i liked who they were i liked who played them i liked how they were acted for the most part I wasn't crazy about uh, the script. You know, there's some cheesy, like, one-liner kind of things. The movie's very aware of itself, which is fine. It was fun. It was cheesy. It was bite-sized. It was easy. Like, I keep saying it was easy, but that's literally what I think, is that it's, like, it's just easy to take yeah, in. Yeah, for you sure. Know what I'm talking about. It's like when you turn on FX and they're showing Ghost Rider and everybody's like, oh, this is the worst movie ever. It's like, no, it's not, because it's yeah, super you just, you easy. you just watch it. You just watch it. And it requires, right. it asks nothing of you. And right. I mean, this movie asks uh, a little bit, so but it asks like very that. little compared to most of the other. Uh, what I didn't like was that they had to uh, do the ants thing. Um, I'm in- that's, that's so interesting to me that, like, that that's what got to you about it. <sighs> I just don't seem like I, I guess I'm just not convinced Fair by enough. the ends. I mean, um, you know, that kind of took me yeah, out no, of it I, just I a little that. bit. I understand where you're going from. Um, but I liked that Sam Wilson was the uh, Avenger yeah. in it. I we got a little bit that. of cap, uh, cap, a little bit of Falcon development. That was cool. Um, yep. Oh, well, what'd you? I like? mean, all the things you said. It was it was very enjoyable to watch. It was well shot. Um, it was shot in a smaller aspect ratio than the other movies to make it look smaller. Um, hmm. which I think was interesting. But it just it was well shot. The scenes where they're small. Uh, were very nice to watch and the scene the effect of him getting small and becoming big again it was well done and that it, it it wasn't yeah, like over was the top cool. it, yep but it yeah, made yeah, sense it worked. it worked i liked it was his like costume he just disappeared but there's like a shadow of him left kind of um, um costume's cool because he looks like a thief kind of he looks like a seedy kind of character but like at the same time it's like a superhero costume like it's it's a it's yeah, a and it also ambiguous costume, God. and it also looks like a costume straight out of you know the seven or yeah. whenever you know like the fact that like it's got like leather right. straps attaching it and stuff. Right. It's not like you know it's not like the Iron Man suit where everything is so sleek and put together, or like the Spider Man suit where it's like really practical yeah. fabric. It's just like it literally um, is just like know, a motorcycle like, suit. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's like a flight suit from yeah, it's from like back leather, and it's you know old school. Like it, it's not skin tight; it doesn't really fit well, which is interesting because you think it would be able to just kind of shrink to fit whoever's wearing it. Yeah, seeing as it compresses the molecules of the people inside it. Yeah, which is just so interesting. It's cool. That, like, I like the cost. The 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 suit can shrink you, but the suit can't shrink. Like to fit you it makes no sense. Right. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't, fit, but it's not you know, like it's it not doesn't like, look like all the other ones where it is like skin tight. Right. Right. Like Black yeah. Panther or Cap um, or not Hulk. Uh, Spider Man, Spider Man, or Iron Man, or anybody that isn't Thor. Yeah. Uh, what didn't you like? There, there was some very not great scripting in it. Um, it was just like there was a lot of great scripting. And there was also a lot of stuff in between all that that was just like I said, they're trying really hard to be dramatic in a movie that didn't really need to be dramatic and didn't come across as dramatic. It came across yeah. as just kind of out of place. Paul Rudd's like dramatic acting chops really aren't there in this movie. Um, he doesn't pull off a lot of those scenes very well. But that's about it. Um. And I just had trouble buying into the villain. I feel like this movie... Nah, I'm not going to say what I think I'm going to say because I don't agree with what what I just thought. I was going to say, I think this movie reminds me a lot of like the the DC television universe, like the Flash and stuff. Uh, Because, I I mean, I kind of agree with that because it's like the effects aren't amazing, but they're also not like, you know, mid-2000s effects or mid-90s effects or late-90s effects in in superhero movies. And like, you know, the characters are kind of like static sort of you know for sure i I feel like it would it would do well as a as a network tv show better than any of the other network tv show superhero movies that marvel puts out 
Definitely. Well, that's like I said, like I said earlier, it was the best DC movie that it wasn't directed by Christopher Nolan. Because like if it was a DC right. movie, it would have been the best DC movie. Um, yeah. So villain ranking. I like Darren Cross. I think that like, I like him okay. a lot, honestly. I would honestly probably put him up there with like, maybe not with Loki, but in that top oh, three. Oh, no. I can't abide that. He's like Obadiah, but instead of being scary and awesome. He's better he's than Obadiah, like, but he's not as good as like, um, he's not he's better, better than Ultron. Than Chris he's not better Eccleston. than Ronan. He's not better than the Red Skull. Okay, I can okay, put him so below Red Skull. I would put him at least fourth. A fifth. Loki's number one. Yeah, fifth. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'll agree with that. I could, I could do fifth. This movie, where, what's our power ranking right now? I got Let it. Let me pull one up. Um, it is okay. Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Ultron, The Avengers, Captain America, The First Avenger, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Iron Man 3, Thor, Thor, The Dark World, uh, Iron Man 2, and The Incredible Hulk. It's better than Iron Man 3. Okay. I can agree with that. I, that's, that's yeah, exactly I don't think it's better than The Winter it. Soldier. I would put it at six. No, seven. Yeah. Better than Iron Man yep. 3. That's how it's. Because I was actually thinking about it going into it is like, I was like, this movie is better yeah, like than it, Iron Man 3. It comes down in the middle. Like, it's definitely not better than Iron Man 1. It's definitely not better than, like, The Avengers. It's definitely, it's right. probably not better than either the Captain America ones. It's definitely better than The Incredible Hulk, uh, both the original Thor movies. So, yeah, I will, I will agree with that. Right between The Winter Soldier and Iron Man 3. Okay. Yep. Cool, cool. Because I thought gonna you were be going to put it at like three. Breakfast food, Ethan. No, well, no, no. You, I love this movie. You texted me last night and you were like, oh man, this movie is so good. And I was just kind of like, eh. Um, breakfast I mean, food. If you got an idea, hit me. Oh, it's easy. Have you ever seen uh, Gordon Ramsay make scrambled eggs? We got to link it in the description. You also okay. have to watch the video. I might make you do it right now. Uh, light, fluffy, uh, bite sized, um, delicious, but uh, honestly, okay. pretty simple. I can go pretty with that. fundamental fundamental that is works. what i want to say that works yeah okay so we're gonna go with gordon ramsay's scrambled eggs that was a great video i just watched i'm gonna link it in the description um and we will you so you guys can see it and see how gordon ramsay makes scrambled eggs he really scrambles the living out of those eggs yeah uh and i think I that's think all so. we got Ethan. No? any final it, uh, any final this, comments this, this movie was pretty pretty simple to unpack pretty easy yeah uh thank you for sticking through with us throughout this whole thing uh, as always, thank you so much for listening to Bacon and Eggs. It's a true uh, pleasure putting this on for you like, week. It really, really is. If you ever want to reach out to us, uh, we have a Patreon account where you can donate to us or you can email us at baconandeggsmedia at gmail.com. If you want to be part of our regional ambassador program, it is still in the works, so you can be a part of the whole process with us. Um, uh, you can find Ethan on Twitter and Instagram at wownow. The O's are zeros. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at americarlin. That's America, R-L-I-N. Uh, you oh, can find enjoy Twitter oh, is uh, Bacon and Eggs 23. And uh, you can find us on Facebook. There's a Bacon and Eggs fans like page. There's a Bacon Please and Eggs the fans group. group. The group is awesome. I love the group. Group is awesome. I also love the group. Uh, you can get literally anything there. You can meet up with other fans. You can get recipes for breakfast foods. You can talk about Marvel. Uh, you can You can talk about other things that we're interested in. Uh, you can post ideas yep. for Sunday brunches. You can literally do whatever you want in there. We that is our our biggest uh, interest gonna be point awesome right now. Here shortly, when a bunch of you join it, a bunch more of you, it's gonna be awesome. I love it. I love the group. Yeah, um, that's all I got. Our artwork is by Vishon Brandon. Um, hopefully, we'll soon have theme music. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, looking like something we'll have within the next few months. Uh, yeah, probably sooner than that. Sooner than yeah. that, but who knows? I don't I know how no long it takes. Probably something we should have sorted out before we started this. Seems like every other podcast does that, but we were just, we dove, dove in, dove in. Well, and, and here's a little bit of advice for anybody out there who's listening and wants to start their own podcast. Uh, it is shockingly more simple than it. you think, but the hardest yep, part is doing getting, it. Just getting rolling. Yeah, like getting on no, iTunes wasn't too much of a challenge. We recorded like three episodes and then figured uh, everything out. Yeah, as far as overhead goes, it, it cost us like, I don't know, 100 bucks to start. Well, like 200 bucks to start. Well, we bought super nice microphones because uh, we wanted to sound good for you guys. But yep. anyway. Uh, if you have questions on how to start a podcast, again, baconandeggsmedia at gmail.com. We'll be happy to help you out. Just... Okay. Yeah, that's guaranteed. We will respond to that email very quickly. Uh, that's all I got. I think you that's know, all I got. Um, we've been – I've been Tyler Carlin. Nope. <laughs> nope. And I've no. – Nope. nope. <laughs> I've been Ethan Edgehill. And I've been Tyler Carlin. And until next time, Ariba Durchi. Uh, all publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Marvel and Bee.